pure experiences. Welcome to the Pure Experiences Podcast. If the consciousness is only one, if it is universal, why is my experience limited to this mind and body? Why can't everything become an objective experience at once? Why the experience is necessarily limited, although the experiencer is not? Let's introspect and find out. One of the questions that is often asked is, if there is one universal consciousness, then why is it limited to my own body and senses here? If I am that consciousness, why can't I experience everything else? For example, what is in the other room? What is in the other country? What is happening on the other side of the world? And what is happening in your mind, in the millions of other minds? Since there is only one experiencer, it must experience everything. But my own direct experience is totally different. So is the teaching wrong? Is all that is being experienced, is being experienced by the individual consciousness? Do we have different consciousnesses for different minds, different bodies, one consciousness each for one body? Is this so? Since this is a frequently asked question, there must be a frequently answer, answer also. And that answer is, probably most of you already know it, the kind answer is, that the consciousness is already experiencing everything. The minds are different, but consciousness is one and it is experiencing everything through all the minds and bodies. And there are metaphors that explain this very nicely. One of the metaphors is of the room with many windows. Let's say you are in a room, you are the observer, the consciousness, and the windows in the room represent the minds. So, one mind is one window and it is showing you one view. The next mind is showing you the next view. And the window on the opposite wall is showing you totally different view. And But the observer is one. It is watching through all the windows. And since the windows are not aware, windows are just structures which are filtering the whole view. That is what we are seeing, which that which is a limited view. The windows themselves do not know what the other windows are showing to the observer. The observer knows. The observer is observing. So this is the many windows metaphor. And there is another metaphor. It is the metaphor of the sky. The minds are like weather. The minds are like clouds and rain and thunder that happen in the sky. Probably some... Cyclone is happening in one part of the sky. Somewhere it is sunshine, somewhere it is sunrise, somewhere it is calm and quiet, and so on. It is all happening in the same sky. It is all happening on the same background, the empty background of the sky. It is the observer on which various activities are happening. Now one cloudy sky does not know the clear sky. They have no connection. Even though they are happening in one space, there is no way to know what is happening there in the other part of the sky. So these are the kind answers that are given. They are satisfactory. They do not raise too many questions. But it is still totally different from my own direct observation. There is no way for me to confirm that this is actually happening. That the same consciousness, whatever it is, is the witness of all the minds, all the senses, all the bodies, all the activities from rocks, water, rivers, oceans, insects, animals, plants and humans and even the higher minds. There is only one consciousness. There is no way for this mind to verify it. There is the problem. The metaphors explain it nicely. 
In the mind of an average seeker, usually there is no doubt that there is only one consciousness. The reason for this is we never see two of them. And when we run it through the machinery of logic, we see that there cannot be two consciousnesses. The subject is always one. As soon as we see another subject, it has already become an object. It's not possible to have two points of view. There would be only one point of view. So this is beyond doubt. This is something which is fairly logical and is our own direct experience. We have never observed more than one consciousness, one subject, one point of view, one experience, not more than one. But somehow the universality of this one is a big problem because my experience shows me that it is located here. Although I cannot point it out, but it is witnessing through the mind and body, which is my mind and body. I prefer to call it as mine simply because it is attached permanently to this point of view. Every experience is coming through this mind and body. And this is a big problem <laughs> because it does not give us that confidence which the other teachings give us. So let us discuss this matter. How can this difficulty be solved? Can I have an evidence for the universality of consciousness? That means the consciousness, can it be shown that it is exper indeed experiencing all the experiences? How can this be verified? I'll be happy if I get a logical answer, but ideally I need a direct experience of this. So let us examine, let us examine why is this happening? What does it mean to experience? Let us start here. Because the question is about experiencing everything. We need to find out about the experience itself. What does it mean to experience one thing and then we can try to see how to experience everything. Once we get the mechanism of one experience, one thing. So let us see. An experience is a change. The change is happening in the existence. The existence itself is consciousness. Consciousness is witnessing this change. Let us isolate a change. View it as an object. An object is nothing but change that is being conveyed through senses. For simplicity, we we'll limit to only one sense, the sense of vision, which is more helpful. So I see an object, one object. What is the mechanism? There are changes in the existence. The existence is non-local, zero-dimensional. There is only change there. No space, no time, nothing. Now, it is being witnessed through the senses. Now, what is a sense? In this case, our eyes. It is another object. The first object is interacting with the second object. First object is anything in the world. The second object is the sense organ. And the sense organ is sending this change, modulating this change. It is formatting it and sending it onwards into the mind. Now here it becomes very muddy. How is the change being perceived as an experience? Since the change itself is consciousness, or the consciousness itself is the change, there is no difficulty in seeing that there is no mechanism involved here. You can clear the muddiness by throwing it away. There is nothing there which is format converter from objective to subjective. That which is changing is the consciousness itself. That which is changing is the existence itself, which is consciousness. So far, it is good. So far, we have registered a change in the consciousness. Now, what about the other objects? Same way, if they influence the sense organ and the sense organ is conveying the change in a particular format. What if we remove the sense organ. Why can't I sense everything as it is? So let us remove the sense organ, remove the eyes. 
what happens well the experience is gone the darkness replaces the experience not knowing has replaced the very colorful and lively experience without the sense organs now why can't i see that object since it is still a change and it is influencing the consciousness consciousness itself is the change so i should be seeing that object what has really happened without the sense organs the experience reduces to nothingness in other words without this modulation of the change it reduces to nothingness so we should take a look at what is really happening in the sense organ sense organs are connected to brain there is a memory there what happens is the change is registered through the sense organ is formatted into a specific pattern and is written in the memory so the eyes do see a shape they see a color they see the light and brightness these are all changes and then in a specific manner this is written in the memory what we experience is not the object what we experience is not the modulations that are generated by the sense organ we are experiencing that which is in the memory memory is another structure another pattern of change but it is a structure it is not the raw vibrations it is not the raw pattern so there is another level there it is well hidden and i i said that there is no mechanism there there is no mechanism there is only storage this memory is being experienced this change is now the consciousness itself so it is being experienced the only thing is the memory is a part of the sense organ when the sense organ is removed along with its uh, uh, extended structure the brain nothing is observed not even darkness because in order to see the darkness you need at least some structure a blank memory is seen as darkness but without that there is nothing at all it is unimaginable it is like the experience of deep sleep where there is nothing at all not even darkness so one must accept this fact that all the experience is due to the memory is due to the sense organs due to the structure what is the structure doing it is all kinds of influences are impinging on the on the sense organ but it allows a tiny portion of them only a tiny portion a specific part is committed into the memory there are no other impressions of anything else that can go in the memory and so it the, that which is experienced is very limited and it appears in the form of an object and, and the objects surrounding that object so we can experience only that which the senses are limiting the experience is always limited if it is not limited it is not experienced there is oneness all the changes in the existence the impinge upon the consciousness which means nothing is being experienced now it's a total absence of anything only that which is limited becomes apparent as an experience that which is unlimited cannot be experienced as, a, as an object cannot be experienced as an event it is there but is not there as an object is there as pure consciousness the consciousness and, and the background on which the objects appear is one and the same thing without the objects there is only background and it cannot be experienced we cannot even imagine it because it's not even darkness it's not even space it's not even emptiness it is total absence so it is like a deep sleep state where there are no objects there is no time nothing is being generated through the senses 
and the consciousness is not really experiencing it is just being it does not disappear but the experience disappears with that the i also disappears because nobody there to experience anything the experiencer arises because of because there is an experience then we can say that the experience is experiencing the experience but without this experience with without this limited experience there is no experiencing and there is no experiencer this is the ground state of the existence this is how it is it is empty it is utterly zero nothing at all so experience is an event of limitation you can say when the experience is limited it appears as object when it is unlimited it appears in its raw form which is nothingness in other words it does not appear at all nothing appears when an object appears it has to be limited it must be limited through this necessity through the structure of memory senses and the sophisticated signal processing that happens in the structure so this is what we find when we look at a single experience now check the other experiences the question was why don't i experience everything now we do experience whatever the senses are telling us that is almost everything for an average person but uh, we discover that there are people and they are saying things which sounds true because i trust them and uh, i meet a person who who says who describes his house that i was in my house it is of this color and that color and there are these things i never experienced them but yes if i go to that house i'll experience exactly the same thing same memory will be formed through the same senses assuming there are there are same senses similar senses and one person is not blind or deaf or something like this and then now this experience through time is and space is converted into a similar experience of just like that of my friend other but let us say i make a phone call and i i, I ask what do you experience and that, that person is going to describe something i'm watching tv or i'm reading something and now i cannot experience that right now right here this is a puzzle what has happened it is simple to answer my senses are limited they cannot go they cannot access the changes that are happening in the room of my friend they are limited the eyes are limited by the line of sight and also proximity even if it is within the line of sight it looks too tiny because of the optics that the eye has and the signal has become noisy so even if the optical instrument is replaced something different you won't get the same signal and plus there are objects on the way and that are blocking the view this is a physical explanation why i cannot see the other senses have their own limitations so we know without these limitations there won't be any clear perception of anything so if suddenly i my eyes could see everything that it will be a overwhelming experience and the objects will merge into each other there won't be any shadows everything will be transparent everything will overlap all the objects in the world will they appear they will appear same size right here right now so fortunately that does not happen because senses are very specialized they are very limited this is this can be understood like this yes if i am i try to experience everything through senses which is the only experience that i am capable of then it will always be limited now and there is something funny that my friend will also say that i am thinking i am imagining something i am daydreaming or i have such and such emotion i am feeling sad i am feeling happy now we know that these things exist because same same experiences happen to me also and i can experience them when they happen here 
but they are happening there somewhere else of which i got the description on the phone or even if that my friend is sitting in the same room face to face i still have only the description what has gone wrong now and the answer is again simple there are certain experiences that do not happen through senses or happen through a different set of senses the internal senses the memory itself is being perceived then the memory is directly being experienced this is what we call the mind the mental activity they do not happen because something is impinging on a sense organ and the sense organ writes in the memory formatted signal of it no it is the memory itself that we are experiencing this is what we call mind now the question is if i am the experiencer of all the minds why am i not experiencing the mind of my friend and this lands us into a difficulty because <laughs> there is no way to do that there is a memory there in the mind of my friend there is a memory here which i called my mind mind of this person and there is a disconnection between them that memory cannot influence my memory or so is the appearance this is what is my direct experience in the waking state what i am experiencing it is a memory remember that's what i'm i'm the consciousness experiencing in the waking state and in the memory of my friend which to him appears as his mind is not accessible to my memory which appears as my mind but the funny thing is they must appear to the same consciousness because the existence itself is conscious since my friend and me are part of the same existence the same existence is witnessing both the memories in order for the mental contents of my friend to be accessible through this memory which will produce the experience of witnessing the other mind in order for that to happen there must be an influence from that memory to this memory from memory number 1 to memory number 2 they must travel an influence now we have two scenarios here both theoretical that there is no such influence that memory is cannot it is non physical nothing travels from that memory to this memory and so it will never happen and there is another scenario which is it is happening but is being ignored by this memory here which i call my memory my mind so memory is a confusing word so we can use the mind so my mind is actually ignoring that which is which is in my friend's mind and it is doing this for a good purpose a good reason imagine all the contents of all the billions of minds of people and or, or organisms creatures everything in this existence trillions and trillions of them being present simultaneously in this mind imagine that now it will be a blur of nothing which is what is being experienced in the deep sleep nothing is being experienced which is as good as experiencing everything so my mind which is a structure of memories and processes is doing a good job of isolating only a few memories it allows only a few to be experienced this is the necessity it is not that the consciousness is incapable of experiencing everything it is because there won't be any experience actually you can uh, uh, imagine a mind which is open to all the influences now what will be the experience like it will be a blur of events nothing really it will be randomness and therefore it is not really registered this mind this iness this body the sense organs of the body and the objects being filtered through this the sense organs they are being experienced through the memory 
through the mind and which is actually protecting itself from all other influences that is why the mind is the barrier it is limiting the experience the consciousness is not limited to this mind this mind is happening on the background of the consciousness the consciousness is not happening in the mind when i say i experience i am referring to the memory that which is this memory when you say you experience you are referring to your memory the minds are different the consciousness is same so it looks like that the kind answer was right actually from this kind of analysis introspection of what is happening and the bad news is there won't be a direct experience of experiencing everything but there is a good news which is as the mind evolves its boundaries they expand or they break one and the same thing more and more of the experience gets impressed on the memory so right now right here it is not so evolved and therefore it is limited to the human experience a very limited and narrow set of experiences fortunately it, it's not going to last the stage is uh, it appears again and again and again which we call reincarnating the same memories they gather again and again into a structure produce an a limited experience and they disappear because it is changing structure it does not last and it gets bigger and bigger and also thinner and thinner and also more and more transparent starts overlapping with other structures more which means more is allowed in the memory and now more is being experienced mind is a mechanism and there are a mechanism to steer the attention which again is a limitation of some kind attention means that even if the mind becomes really big it must focus on a small part in order to make any sense of it right now we have the attention here and now on the sense organs and therefore everything that is uh, that is happening around us is being ignored this is the mechanism in the mind if this mechanism stops functioning everything will be allowed to experience and it will be again a chaos it will be again a blur of events nothingness emptiness will be experienced you can see the emptiness behind the limited forms that we are experiencing they are also empty they are not coming from outside they are being generated in the emptiness so if too many forms are generated they reduce to nothing uh, randomness of some kind is being experienced which the mind completely ignores as good as falling asleep so when the state of the mind changes it becomes open to influences of all kinds this is what is being experienced and since it cannot make any sense of it nothing is really registered in the memory the memory registers only that which agrees to its past experiences there are so many filters upon filters in the mind after a few structures are formed they become they start filtering the incoming experiences more and more and as soon as the full human being is formed it cannot experience anything more than what is there in the memory itself it becomes very limited actually the waking state is very limited and there are other states of the mind and where the attention steers away from this limitations and other experiences happen there are dreams that are still connected to the individual memories but more freedom there and that's why it is almost totally random a dream is they don't make much sense occasionally they, there is a meaningful dream otherwise it's all activity a blur of activities of some kind and there are other experiences other worldly experiences which are more stable and they they appear from other parts of the universal memory it's still limited the more limited the experience is the more real it looks more sense it makes it's easy to comprehend that experience 
so in the altered states of the mind this memory is not being accessed some other memories are ex- accessed and when the attention steers back into the waking state well if there is no transfer of memories then nothing is remembered and we say i experienced nothing because minds are minds live in past minds live in memories so it it is experience of the mind and therefore only that which is in the memory is being experienced that which was experienced but is not in this memory is gone forever the change has happened nothing registered the change this memory is also going it is not stable so we we forget so many things they are not erased but they become inaccessible to us because of this limitation of the mind it can get only so many things in the awareness not everything in the memory is in our awareness right now only the most important things what is my name where do i live what do i need to do next and so on the immediate skills and other things imagine if this memory is also gone then there will be left a pure stream of experiences even though limited through the senses and slowly new structures will start forming a new person a personality will form it will happen almost instantly actually and this is my view on this question of why i can't i experience everything even if i am everything well you cannot experience everything in form of objects objects are created through senses and the mind bodies and the brains therefore impossible to do that non objective experiences do not require memory senses or all but then there is nothing there to register it nothing there to remember what happened it is a pure experience is gone as soon as it has happened there is an experience of it there is an experiencer also but as soon as it has happened it is gone there is no one to claim that it happened because there is no memory and therefore although we are experiencing everything as consciousness we cannot say this we can say about those things that are in the memory because they are stable for a while and but they are limited as experience of objects pure experiences you were listening to pure experiences by the rune pradhan